Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about the derivative. In the previous video, we talked about interpreting the meaning of the average rate of change and how it relates with the slope of the secant line. Well, now we're going to talk about what's the connection between the slope of the secant line and the slope of the tangent line using limits. And we're also going to use the limit of the difference quotient to define the derivative. So let's pick up where we left off in the previous video. We want to talk about what's called the slope of the tangent line and how it's related with the derivative. So in the previous few examples, we talked about the average rate of change and how it connects with the slope of the secant line that connects two points on the graph of a curve. Now we're going to talk about what's called the tangent line and how it relates with the graph and the slope of a curve at one point. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to use the idea of how to calculate the slope of a secant line and use the limit process to find the slope of a tangent line. So suppose you have a point P that's at the point A comma F of A on some curve and you have this other point Q that's a little bit away on the x coordinate wise away from x equals a. So you have a plus h is the x coordinate and f of a plus h is the y coordinate and that's the point Q. These are two points on the graph of some function y equals f of x and we're going to calculate the slope using the slope formula which is the slope of the secant line because we're connecting two points on the curve with a straight line. So you have this graph. The graph is the one that's in blue that's curved and you want to have these two points, P, which is A comma F of A, and this point Q, that's another point on the graph, that's at A plus H comma F of A plus H. You connect these two points with a straight line, and that's called the secant line, and we want to calculate the slope of the secant line. So let's do that. The slope is M, or the average rate of change, as we talked about in the previous video. It's F of B subtract F of A divided by B minus A using the definition of average rate of change, or since we're calling B A plus H, it's f of a plus h minus f of a divided by b is a plus h again, subtract a. So now notice, if you simplify the denominator, you have a subtract a, and so h is the only thing that's left in the denominator. And then in the numerator, you have f of a plus h minus f of a. You may have seen this, this expression in college algebra. This is what's called the difference quotient. f of a plus h minus f of a all over h, or you may have seen f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Either way, it's called the difference quotient. And that's also the slope of the secant line that passes through these two points, p and q, on this curve. So the difference quotient can be interpreted as both the average rate of change of some function over a closed interval, but it also can be interpreted as the slope of a secant line that passes through two points that are on the curve. If we let h, which is representing the denominator of this average rate of change, or difference quotient, and h is getting really close to zero, so we're basically shrinking the interval that's between a and a plus h. So you have these two values on the x-axis. You are starting at x equals a, and you're going to x equals b, which was a plus h. You want the distance between a and a plus h to shrink, so we're going to let h go to zero. So this interval, closed interval, a to a plus h, is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller the smaller you make h. So what happens is that the secant line will become closer and closer to what's called the tangent line to the graph y equals f of x at the point p, which is a comma f of a. So let's illustrate that with this graph. Okay, The graph that's on the left, you have the same graph as we had before. You have this curve that's in blue, and then you have several secant lines. The point p is what's called a fixed point. It does not move. Okay, We're not moving the point p on this curve. It stays at x equals a and the y value is f of a. Now we're going to choose a point q1 that is some point on the curve. So we're going to choose this q1. It's going to have a x coordinate. It's going to have a y coordinate. We connect the point p with this q1 and that's called a secant line between p and q1. And we calculate the slope of that secant line. Okay, so now imagine that the interval is shrinking. So you were at this x coordinate for q1. Let's move a little bit closer to x equals a. So let's say you move a little bit closer to x equals a and now you get this point on the curve, which is at q2. So again, construct a secant line between p and q2 and you calculate the slope of that secant line. Okay, then repeat the process again. So you were at this x value for q2. Well, move it a little bit closer to x equals a. So move it a little bit closer, you get this point on the curve, and that's what's called q sub 3, and so now you construct another secant line between p and q3, and you calculate the slope of that secant line. So imagine that you continue this process 
indefinitely where you move this x coordinate for your point q closer and closer to x equals a. The points q are going to get closer and closer to point p. And so all those secant lines are going to get closer and closer to this line, this pink line or this red line that just touches the curve in just one point, which is point P. This line that passes through the curve and the point P is called a tangent line at P. So how do you calculate the slope of the tangent line? Because that's one of the main problems in calculus. How do you calculate the slope of this line that touches the graph in just one point P? Well, it's a limit. The slope is a limit as you make this h smaller and smaller and smaller as you let h go to zero. So in other words, you're moving this point q closer and closer and closer to p of the difference quotient, which we knew the difference quotient represented the slope of the secant line. So it's a limit as h gets really small of the slope of a secant line. If this limit exists, that's called the slope of the tangent line. And so your tangent line will just touch the curve at exactly one point, and that point is at P, which is X equals A. So using this idea behind the limit and also slope of a secant line, we're going to now explore how to find the slope of a tangent line using this limit process. So example five, limit of slope of a secant line. Given the function, a function that we're very familiar with, the quadratic function f of x equals x squared, so a nice parabola that passes through the origin, 0, 0, we're going to complete the following problems involving the slope of a secant line and then use limits to find the slope of a tangent line at one point on the curve. All right, part one, find the slope of a secant line for a equals 2 and h equals 1. Provide a graph of the function y equals f of x and the secant line that we're talking about in this problem. So the graph is given, so it's a nice parabola that passes through the origin, 0, 0. It goes through 1, 1, 2, 4, and the point 3, 9, and so on and so on. You get the y values by plugging in the x coordinate into y equals x squared. Now remember, if you want to calculate the slope of a secant line, you need a closed interval. So the starting value is at a equals 2, and we want to go up to a plus h. So if a equals 2 and h is 1 in the problem, then that means the stopping value for the closed interval will be at b, which is a plus h, or 2 plus 1, which is 3. So we're going between a equals 2 and b equals 3. So you can notice that on the graph, we're going to start at x equals 2, or a equals 2, which is at the point 2 comma 4. And if you plug in x equals 3 or b equals 3 into the function, you get 9. We're going to connect these two points with a line, and that's called the secant line. So let's calculate the slope of that secant line using average rate of change. The slope is the average rate of change. And remember, it's a difference quotient when you're using a and a plus h. So f of a plus h minus f of a in the numerator. So it's a difference between the y values divided by how far are the two points apart in terms of x coordinates. So f of a plus h, a plus h we said was 3, so f of 3, minus f of a, and a was 2, so f of 3 minus f of 2, divided by how far apart were the two x values? Well, the starting value was at 2, the ending value was at 3, so 3 minus 2. So f of 3 would be, what's the function's y value when you plug in 3? It's 3 squared, or 9. And then the same thing for f of 2, the y value at x equals 2 is 4. So the numerator gives you 9 minus 4, or 5, and then 5 divided by 1 will be 5. So in other words, the slope of this secant line that connects 2, 4 and 3, 9, the slope is 5. All right, number 2. Find the slope of a secant line for a equals 2, but this time the h is an unknown quantity that's not 0. Find the limit as h approaches 0 for the slope of this secant line. So this time, we don't know what the value of h is, but we're still going to calculate the slope of a secant line, but then use limits to help us find out what's called the slope of the tangent line. So this time we start at a equals 2 again, and the ending value, because we need a closed interval to calculate the slope of a secant line, the, the ending value will be b, which is a plus h. In this case, we don't know what h is, but it's 2 plus h because a is 2. So this time we're going to calculate the slope of the secant line using the same formula. It's f of a plus h minus f of a 
divided by, and the denominator will just be h, it'll be a plus h minus a, and the a's will cancel out. So f of 2 plus h, subtract f of 2, divided by a plus h is 2 plus h, subtract a, which is 2. So notice in the denominator, you do have h. That's important for the difference quotient. In the numerator, we have to do a little bit of algebra. You're plugging 2 plus h into the function, which is f of x equals x squared. So you take the x value, or the input value, and you square it. So 2 plus h, all squared. Subtract 2 squared, which we know will be 4. And it's all divided by h after the 2's cancel out in the denominator. So let's simplify. 2 plus h all squared is 2 plus h times itself. So 2 plus h times 2 plus h minus 2 squared is 4, and the denominator is h. So if you use 4 rule to multiply 2 plus h times 2 plus h, so 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times h is 2h, and then you have another h times 2, which is 2h, so it gives you 4h altogether, and then h times h gives you the h squared, subtract 4, all divided by h still. So notice in the numerator, the 4, subtract 4 will cancel each other out, and so what's left over, like we talked about in the previous video, will be terms that only have h in common. So you have a 4h and an h squared. Factor out the h from the numerator. And so what's left over after you cancel out the h that you factor out with the denominator will be a 4 plus h. And so that's what's called the slope of a secant line between a equals 2 and b equals 2 plus h. So you start at a equals 2, and we were ending at 2 plus h, where h was any non-zero number. And so the slope was 4 plus h. So that takes care of the first part of the problem. Find the slope of the secant line. We did. So now the second part. Find the limit as h approaches 0 for the slope of this secant line. So when we do that, we know that we get a tangent line whenever we let h go to 0 because we're making that interval smaller and smaller and smaller. So you have a limit as h approaches 0 of the difference quotient f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Well, we already calculated this part. When we calculated the difference quotient, we came up with 4 plus h. So limit as h approaches 0 of 4 plus h. And now notice that 4 plus h is a polynomial. So you can directly plug in 0 for the h. And so 4 plus 0 will give you 4. So let's go back up to the graph and see what we actually calculated. So here's the graph of the polynomial, f of x equals x squared. We want to find out what is happening to the slopes of the secant lines when you get closer and closer to x equals 2. So if you take this curve and you draw a tangent line that just touches the graph at x equals 2, you get this tangent line that's represented as an L, lowercase or capital L, and we've just found out the tangent line slope at 2 comma 4 is 4. So finding the slope of the tangent line and finding the instantaneous rate of change are the same. They're exactly the same problem. So we talked about instantaneous rate of change back in the previous video. So if we want to find out how fast a quantity is changing at an instant in time, it's the same problem as finding the slope of the tangent line. So we started this problem by calculating the slope of a secant line, and we use a limit process to find the slope of a tangent line at one point. So the slope of a tangent line and slope of a curve at a point, those are the same problem. So this is a definition of a slope of a curve at a point. Okay, it's going to look very similar to the definition of instantaneous rate of change at one instant. So if y equals f of x is a given function, the slope of a curve or slope of a tangent line, it may be stated that way, at a point a comma f of a is the limit as h approaches 0 of the difference quotient. f of a plus h, subtract f of a, all divided by h. If you only have this fraction, that's called the difference quotient, or we've also seen it called the average rate of change or slope of a secant line. But whenever you attach this limit as h approaches zero, so if you're letting the h get really, really small, then this becomes slope of the tangent line, slope of a curve, or instantaneous rate of change at x equals a. So provided that the limit exists, that's what all three of those are all called. So now we're ready to talk about derivatives. The derivative of a function, y equals f of x, at a point, x comma f of x is the instantaneous rate of change, or the derivative is the slope of the tangent line to the graph y equals f of x at a point, x comma f of x. So those are exactly the same. 
or it could be called the derivative is the slope of the curve y equals f of x at the point x comma f of x. So we know all three of these problems are related. They're all the limit of the difference quotient, so they're all called the derivative, if that limit exists. So if you can find the derivative for a function, the function is called differentiable at this point x comma f of x. And we find the derivative of a function, or you take the derivative of a function, or you differentiate a function. All those mean the same thing. So if you have a function y equals f of x, that's the given function. The derivative of f of x, so the derivative of this given function, with respect to x, so x is your variable, it's denoted this way, and this is the most common notation for the derivative. It's read as f prime of x. So the little apostrophe is read as prime. So you read it as f prime of x, or if you're talking about a function as just y equals and then the formula, it could be read as y prime for the derivative of y. And so the derivative is defined to be this. f prime of x is the limit as h approaches zero of the difference quotient. f of x plus h, subtract f of x, all divided by h. Provided that the limit exists, this is called the derivative of f at x. So that is one notation for the derivative. There is one more notation, and it's what's called Leibniz notation. So whenever you take the derivative, or if you find the derivative of y equals f of x with respect to x, so you're, they're telling you that x is the variable, another way of writing the derivative is dy dx. That's how you read it. It's Don't think of it as a fraction. It's dy dx. So y is the function. So you're taking the derivative of y. And the dx is saying you're taking the derivative with respect to x. x is your variable. This is called Leibniz notation. So we're going to see this type of notation for derivative when we talk about implicit differentiation, related rates, and chain rule later in the course. It displays not only the name of the function, which is y, it's also telling you the variable, which is x. So all of these mean the derivative of y with respect to x. So if your function is y equals f of x, dy dx, that means the derivative. d dx of f of x, that means you're taking the derivative with respect to x is your variable of this function. Or df dx, since the function was called y, you can replace the y with an f, saying it's the derivative of function f with respect to x. So this is a good place to stop our video. Now that we've talked about the definition of a derivative and the three problems that are all equivalent to one another, how to find the slope of a curve at a point, how to find the slope of the tangent line at a point, and we also know that it's also equivalent to the instantaneous rate of change at an instant in time. Those all three are equivalent problems to solve. We talked about the definition of a derivative using the limit of the difference quotient, and we also talked about the different types of notations for a derivative using prime notation, and we also talked about Leibniz notation. So if you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about calculating the derivative for various functions using the definition of the limit of the difference quotient.